UK government recently announced they'll be offering subsidies for new EVs. They also announced that they'll be looking at adjusting the expensive car tax and the current 20% VAT rate on EV public charging, perhaps as early as this autumn budget. What's in store later this year and what difference is it likely to make? Dave takes on the UK government and reveals what we are likely to get out of it. Well, the subsidies are the first of the measures to be confirmed and have actual values specified. It's most definitely not the end, as there is much more to come both later this year and next year. This government is determined to complete the transition to clean green electricity, and if it needs help, they're going to give it. Well, let's deal with the subsidy first. It is limited, it's not open to all EVs. The first condition is that the list price of the EV must be less than £37,000. Now, some conspiracy theorists think this is all because it will specifically exclude any of the Teslas, which start at £39,995. Uh, it's not the case, of course. First, Tesla's launching several budget versions of the existing models in Q3, which has just started, and they will all be under £37,000 to be defined as budget models. In addition, also in Q3, Tesla's announced it will be launching a Model 2, and this will definitely have a list price below £37,000, possibly down below £27,000. There's no conspiracy going on here. The £37,000 is really just a political statement to say we're not going to subsidise all EVs and we're certainly not going to subsidise those big expensive ones, the big Audis and the Porsches costing the best part of £100,000. The government wants to support the average UK car buyer and they will be paying at the moment 20 30 possibly as much as 35 35,000 pound already check the top 10 best selling cars in the UK during June it's led by the Nissan Qashqai 30 odd thousand and the Ford Focus the petrol version which is about 29,000 so it is intended to help everyday car buyers just go and have a look at EVs by making them a bit cheaper. It might convince some more people to choose an EV than otherwise. Full details are yet to be announced, but the full subsidy, which is £3,750, only applies to the dearest of the cars that are heading up towards £37,000. As the list price gets cheaper, so the subsidy is reduced. There do not seem to be any conditions such as well, minimum wage, got to be on benefits, anything like that. It's just a straightforward subsidy. It will have an impact because if anyone ever just offers three or four thousand pounds off the price of a car, it will attract new buyers without a doubt. The subsidy seems to be coming into force almost immediately and so will have a big impact over the summer months and heading up towards the next registration plate change, which happens in October. Well, this is when the number of sales normally takes a leap forward anyhow. There is no indication as to how long in terms of time the subsidy will last, but it's got an overall value of about 700 million, so it's probably just going to depend purely on the uptake as to how long that sum of money will last, unless they want to top it up in the meantime. Well, what else is announced but not yet specified? Well, there are two other areas where the government is already considering making major changes. The first of those is the expensive car tax. By offering a subsidy, the government is recognising that many EVs are falling into the expensive car tax when in fact they're really just at the better end of the family car market and not truly de designated as an expensive car. It's a figure set of £40,000. It's not been changed for an awful long time, despite the overall price of all cars, not just EVs, but petrol and diesel as well. They've been rising quite steadily. And it does mean today that an awful lot of average cars now are falling into the expensive car tax rate. It's also a strange tax, cost nothing in the first year, but then for the next five years there's a premium of £425 added when you tax your car. It is in reality just a punishment for those able to afford more expensive cars, and is set at a level that is very unlikely to deter them from buying those larger, less efficient cars. Well, the second area that the government is already investigating 
concerns the VAT rate that is charged on the electricity provided by public EV chargers. All domestic electricity is charged VAT at the rate of 5%, while all business electricity is charged VAT at the rate of 20%. Now, for EV drivers that can charge at home, this makes home charging disproportionately cheaper than public EV charging, and it makes EV charging more expensive for those who can't charge at home. It's an area that's been discussed for quite some time. It is one that has arisen again as we head towards the autumn budget. I'm not sure there's going to be much more announced in this autumn's budget, but it's definitely on the table. It would make a very significant difference to the price that EV public chargers set their tariffs. I wouldn't hold my breath on this one. So why is the government doing all this and making even more considerations like the expensive car tax and VAT on public charging? And the simple answer is, whether or not you like it, the government is committed to reducing the pollution from vehicle exhaust systems that we currently experience. It really is as simple as that. And it absolutely baffles me that so many people can be fighting so vigorously to perpetuate the poisonous, toxic, carcinogenic fumes, gases and particles that come out of every vehicle's exhaust pipe. Reducing airborne pollution, reducing the strain on the NHS, reducing the number of serious illnesses and reducing the number of premature deaths every single year from the effects of the airborne pollution, which is largely caused by vehicles cannot be anything other than a very good thing to aim for. And this is not just the UK government. Every single government around the world is also doing exactly the same. And that includes some countries where you'd not expect it, such as India and China. Here they have a much more serious problem and much more resistance to doing anything about it, and in many cases less money allocated. I fully appreciate, as does the government, that an EV today is not as good an option for some drivers as a petrol or diesel car will be. Nobody is suggesting that these people have to change their buying attitude and go out and buy an EV tomorrow. That's crazy. We only sell about 2 million new cars a year in the UK, so the transition is by definition a slow one. But the advances in the technology that is going on into modern EVs is progressing at a staggering pace. 10 years ago, you'd be lucky in the winter to get 100 mile range out of an average EV. Only really expensive ones could offer anything like this. But BYD and Cherry, both of them Chinese EV manufacturers, have recently announced that they'll be launching new EVs within two years that will have a range of anything up to a thousand miles. Once an EV has a range of a thousand miles and produces zero pollution because no EV has an exhaust pipe, there are very few reasons why people would even want to reject them. So all those people who are getting up in arms about being forced into EVs and being unsuitable and everything else, can I just suggest, calm down, sit back and wait. A couple of years, you can still buy your petrol cars in the meantime, and you might well find that your EV then will be able to do something that your petrol car in a hundred years of techn technological advances has never been able to do. And that is to take just an average saloon car and drive it from Land's End to John O'Groats non-stop without charging. Family saloon car. Well, the government has the mandate for the percentage of EVs to be sold year by year through to 2035. They'll be keeping a close eye on this. And if anything is going to prevent manufacturers from reaching these targets, you can be assured that there will be new measures announced in order to help them do that. We're in a strange situation at the moment, thrown into total chaos because of the tariff fiasco, but that will one day settle down and the industry will get back onto much more secure footing. So how much difference is it going to make to us drivers? Well, the difference it will make could be as high as 10% of the price of the car, and that's a significant amount of discount. It will mean that some people will now be able to afford to get onto the EV market at the lower price end of new cars, whereas before they might not have been able to. For others, it will mean they'll be able to be afford a slightly better specification car than previously. 
in the middle, of course, it's just going to be an awful lot of people who find the cars they want to buy are very much cheaper. It's a good thing for everyone all round. Well, overall, sales of new cars are on a slight decline at the moment. They have been since 2016. So I don't see this turning that around anytime soon into a massive surge in sales. EVs represent one in four cars, so to create a massive surge, there'd have to be an incredible incentive for people to go and buy EVs in any significant numbers, and that I just don't see at this moment in time. However, as the supermarkets say, every little helps, and if this is going to make a difference, it's a very good thing. What else could the government announce? Well, I'm fully expecting to see a number of very critical announcements over the next few years. As that technolo technological advancement gains pace, I sincerely hope there is somebody in the government who is monitoring these advancements because many of them could dramatically change what the government has already announced. I'm referring here to the uh, public charging bonanza. See, one simple advance, uh, uh, example would be at the moment, the average EV will cover about 150, 200 miles on a single charge. For those who can charge at home, this means that if you go out for a weekend to the beach or to the National Trust property or to the National Park, do a bit of driving around, you might well need to charge on that journey. Well, if in future the batteries in EVs make them capable of 600 or even 1,000 miles of range, and they can also recharge in less than five minutes, then there are very, very, very few journeys that can be made that will require any sort of public charging on the journey. As an example, you live in London, you want to go down to Cornwall for the weekend. Well, London to Penzance is 300 miles. So you could easily drive there non-stop, uh, charge your car at home before you go, get down there, uh, you're going to have two thirds of your battery left, you can drive around Cornwall for the weekend and then drive back up on a Sunday night and you're still going to have a quarter or a third of your battery charge left. And that would mean, in plain English, that the number of public EV charges required out on the roads and the motorways between London and Cornwall, that's already changed. And it will change further as the range increases on EVs. Unless the government keeps an eye on this and adjusts both existing grants and subsidies and future ones to cater for these rapid advancements, then we could be heading down a road of spending a huge amount of money slamming in hundreds of thousands of charges that may never ever be needed. One area where this government really needs to take a bold step and offer some bold incentives is in making sure that every single house that possibly can will in future be equipped with home charging. There are millions of houses, roadside houses, detached semis and terraced with no off-road parking and they have a pavement between the house and the roads where the EVs will be parked, and the councils will not allow any form of cabling above, under, or on top, or beneath the pavement. This is one area where I beg the government to put much more effort. It will be far better to allow for more than two thirds of the population, which can at the moment, to be able to charge at the cheaper rates at home, than it will be to spend countless millions or billions on public charges that the technology might make redundant within the next two or three years. There's also much more that can be done with people who live in apartments. Many of them do have designated parking, but on the current design, planning and regulations, they cannot get cheap uh, home charging tariffs on their parking spaces. Small changes in the law here might make it really easy for people who do live in high rise flats and apartments to be able to charge at home, even if they live on the 15th floor and enjoy those cheap overnight rates. Once again, this is an area which I beg the government to look into with a matter of some urgency. Well, I hope you found this interesting. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and click notification bell so that we can advise you each time we launch a new video. If you have enjoyed the video or found it informative, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see a lot more content like this, then please consider becoming a member. So a massive big thank you to all our existing members for sticking with us. Many of them have been with us for an awful long time with the support they provide for the channel. Without them, we would not be able to do what we do at the moment. 
As always, if you have any comments of your own or any ideas that the government should be looking into, please leave them down below in the comments section. So thank you very much for watching. I'm Dave.